Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Samson. I work as a data scientist. Right now I'm the team lead marketing analytics at ShareNow. In this video, I want to share a couple of things that I've learned um, as an hiring manager, someone was trying to hire into my team as mistakes that I found that um, people make, especially people who are trying to get their first job. So let's get straight into it so that you also don't make these mistakes. Thank you. Number one, don't lie on your CV. I found that, <laughs> I found it interesting that I have to say that, but it's actually true. Um, maybe I should put that in the right, in, in another way to say that. Don't claim to know what you don't know. So um, you say, for example, you're trying to get your first job as a data scientist or as a data analyst, and you say you've done, let's look for an example, you've done market basket analysis or whatever. Um, when you use big grammars like that, anyone who sees that or anyone who sees something that is interesting is going to um, ask. So, or you say you've done this, and I'm just curious as an hiring manager, oh, this is nice, and I bring you into an interview, and I find that, that you, your CV was prepared by someone else. That's already a no. That's, that's a negative for you. So, always stay within the line of what you know. Say what you know, say what you have done, so that if anybody asks you any questions about it, you would be able to defend it. And of course, also, when you lie on your CV or you claim to know what you don't know, what, Im what impression that gives is also that um, it's a small word. When I go to a new company and I see your name again, I see, oh, this guy probably lies on the CV. So don't do that. Don't claim to know what you don't claim you know what you don't know. Don't claim you've done what you have not done. Mm, no, don't do that. Second thing I'd like to say is build projects. I'm sure a lot of people have probably told you this a lot of times, but this is another reminder of build project. You see, when you're trying to get your first job, the, the problem is you don't have a tangible experience to show that you can do something. So the hiring manager, IR, IR manager is trying to take a chance on you. And you do the person a big favor if you um, build projects, if you can show that apart from everyone who has gone to Coursera or to Udemy or to EDX or whatever to do a machine learning course and cost themselves a data scientist, you've actually built something. I remember when I was going to get my first job, maybe I'm going to share that in another video, um, and I, I built this very simple, um, I called it a shoe, shoe size app, and I had a story around it, and basically what the app does was to um, predict people's shoe size from their height. And I remember my first job, I showed them the app. As funny as that would be, that already so set me upside from everyone else because I wasn't just saying that, oh, I went to a boot camp, oh, I did some machine learning program online, but I actually showed that I could do it. And that's the big difference between someone who sees and someone who does. So don't be a sayer, be a doer. Build project, as small as they may be, as crazy as they may be. Even if it's just like a simple predictive app, built on trees, random forest, or maybe you want to go soft skater, you want to build a long chain app, just something, show something that you build that works and you can show a prototype. I always like to advise, don't just show me the code, show me like an app. So if you can write a code, build, build a flask wrapper around it, if you can deploy it and stream it, absolutely amazing because I can then see the end product of what you're doing and I, I can interact with it without having to go through your code, which is I, sometimes really boring or difficult when you look at number of applica applicants uh, for a position. So definitely don't be a sayer, be a doer, build project. Number three, um, in my opinion, I think there is no need for some personal details like your age, your, your house address. I think your city name is enough. So no, of course, this is also subject to people who are HR that you want to ask, but I think like very personal details um, uh, is probably not enough in your applications. Um, another thing I want to say is generally don't make your life complex. Um, so I invite, in this my experience, I invited people into interviews and then they were there and I was asking them questions and I ask you, when I ask you, Two plus two, don't tell me, oh, two plus two, if you count one, if you count two, if you count three, then you count four, then that make, makes it four. Answer the questions as simple as possible because the way you answer um, might also intrigue me to um, 
ask you more questions and I might start to ask you very difficult questions that probably you don't want to answer. Um, so when you are, when you ask questions, answer as straight as possible. Of course, not like you're trying to run away from the question, but answer with confidence and answer as straight as possible and make everything all easy for yourself. Nothing, nothing difficult. Don't make your life complex. I remember when I was in the University of Hamburg for my master's, we used to have these um, oral exams and the oral exams were quite interesting because the, the examiner will ask you a question and depending on the answer you give will determine the next question the examiner is going to ask you. So um, every time I think about that, it can be really bloody. Um, so get make your life easy if you're trying to get your first analyst role congratulations or your data science role don't make your life complex just answer these questions as you asked directly in the interview um, another thing i would like to say is language so if you've seen the job ad in um english don't send a german cv it's quite interesting but this was one of my experience so you put out the job description in english and then you're sending a german cv if you live in germany for example if you live in spain you send a spanish cv the first thing that comes to my mind is what do you mean do you i do what if i don't speak german or what if i don't speak french or what if i don't speak spanish so send the cv in the exact language the job description was was um, posted if it was posted in german send a german cv if it was posted in english send an english send an english cv last one don't apply for a job you're not qualified for you know um i always like to advise everyone looking for a job especially entry level to on the minimum send at least two quality applications per day so it means that if you've uh, taken the time to actually apply for a job you're not qualified for, you've wasted your time. And that time can be used to prepare a, a, a quality application somewhere else. So don't apply for a job you're not qualified for. If you've, if you've had a software engineering background and you're really looking for a software engineering job, don't try to put in an application for a data analyst role because they're just two words apart. Um, so I would advise stick to what you know how to do, stick to what you have the experience and the background for, what you've trained yourself to become. And of course, I know the job market right now is crazy, but then just stick to it and then you have a better chance of getting it. And I'm not saying you have to fill all of the 100% requirements of a job ad. Um, I think if I would say in my evaluation, if you have 85%, you should definitely put in an application because then you're able to fight for it alongside the other people who are going to be applying for the same job. So um, that's it basically from my end. Thank you very much for listening and uh, I'll see you in the next one.